Alright guys, this is a long plane review for Grand Prix Rally 2 on the Amstrad CPC, released by Amsoft in 1985. However, this is actually a French game already previously released by Lorry Seals under the name Rally 2. The strange thing is, there was never a Rally 1 from Lorry Seals on the Amstrad. Indeed, I can't find any game that appears to be the original of which this is a sequel to. I was assuming there might have been a rally game for some obscure computer like the Thompson M05 that was popular in France before the 464 from another publisher, but so far it's proved impossible to find from googling around, so if anyone knows please tell me in the comments below. Even the Amsoft name is a little odd because similarly there was no Grand Prix Rally 1 from them either. They're probably referencing the excellent 3D Grand Prix that this is awkwardly named a sequel to. But hey ho, on with the game and uh, let's kick things off here. Um, now I came across this game when we did the massive A to Z of Amsoft games Amstream livestream a few weeks ago and I was kind of impressed by this game and made a mental note to come back to it and maybe do a long play. And so here we are. And here we are on the title screen. I had a bit of a basic loading screen there, but this is very nice. And so we've got big chunky colourful graphics on the go and a really jolly tune. And this tune has been done by musician uh, Michael uh, Winogradoff, a very popular chip tune a musician in France. He did music for lots of games, and the most notable ones, in my opinion, are Squeak, 3D Fight, Builderland, Batron, Bob Winner, Baby Joe, Bumpy, Infernal Runner, Panzer Kickboxing, and many more. And look, guys, there's an option there to edit tracks, which we will look at at the end of the video. There we go. Get ready to complete in Rally Zero. Wow, okay. Well, there's 10 stages in total, but they're weirdly numbered uh, zero to nine. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Couldn't they just just chosen Rally 1 to 10? I don't know. Anyway, it's a very, very simple um, uh, racing driving game. Uh, avoid the cars and get to the end of the track before time runs out. Um, this is extremely simple. Um, basically, um, it's got auto accelerate with fire to brake. So controls are literally left and right in the joystick and fire button to slow down and brake and that's it so there's no up and down uh, to control your acceleration or change gears or anything like that it is very 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 basic and simple however it's really good fun actually and i think the jolly presentation and the uh, big chunky colorful graphics go a long way towards that sometimes there's beauty and simplicity and um, for 1985 and Amsoft, this is um, this is really good stuff. Uh, so, guys, basically remember that this is early days of um, programming on the Amstrad CPC 464. The machine had only been out for uh, less than a year, probably when this was developed, and programmers were still getting used to the machine. In fact, the manual proudly proclaims that it's 100% written in machine code. Ah, bravo, bravo. <laughs> There we go, and we get a score at the end there. And I think the score is based on how much time is left and how how fast you did that um, particular race. And now, guys, the scenery has now changed. Apparently, this is the I think this is the bridge stage with the ocean either side of us. And each stage is different with a different um, like weather setting or. Um, scene or whatever so we're going to encounter deserts um snow fog sunny conditions and even a night stage as well so guys okay um at the top of the screen there we've got a copyright lorry seals april 1985 i don't know why they needed to have a copyright there with the date of the when the game was made permanently there on every racetrack but it's there so <laughs> whatever using the default font on the Amstrad. So we've got two bars at the top there, T and L. Um, T is time, ticking down, you run out of time, it's game over of course. 
and you'll notice as you overtake cars the t-bar um sometimes actually um jumps up again there you go so it's not actually too hard as long as you're very careful overtaking cars and the l bar is the length of the track so when that fills up and gets to the ends the track is completed So we don't get like a, a finishing line or anything like that. You just have to watch the L bar filling up there. And that was the bridge level there and there's our score. Get ready to compete to stage NB2. Why NB? I think it's short for number. Couldn't they have written something better there? I don't know. Anyway, um, I think this is the ocean stage. So you've got grass on the left there and sea to the right there. Obviously, try and avoid crashing into the sea as much as possible. Uh, you get a little noise there as you go off the track and it slows you down. And a very basic sort of car buzzing engine noise, which um, we're all familiar with on driving games on the Amstrad and other 8 bit computers. Sometimes those driving noises can be really grating on the ears. This one isn't too harsh on the ears, I find, and is okay. So yeah, as you overtake cars there, you see the T-bar filling up, that's time, and L, length of the circuit. We're just over the halfway mark now. And there we go, really nice jingles and music though. I really like the presentation in the game. I like the little Bravo screen at the end of a race and stuff. It all adds up. All these little touches all add up to me. So probably that's probably why I'm kind of like pleasantly surprised by the game. Because it's a simple driving game. But obviously they've um, gone to the extra effort to uh, have different um, like locations and weather and stuff like that. Okay, we don't actually see like rain and coming down on the screen as like little sprites of like raindrops or anything like that. It's all very simple, but with all these little touches like that um, Bravo screen there and jingles before races and stuff. I love it. I really do love it. It's got such a nice charm to the game. Um, you might think, oh bless, but you know, it's actually still quite fun to play. Um, I mean, this is clearly heavily inspired by pole position the coin up from Atari that was extremely popular in the arcades around about the time and I love that game so this clone of it kind of a clone um, has already won my heart a little bit um, uh, sprite scaling is okay you get a decent sense of speed uh, thank uh, much thanks to like the the white lines in the middle of the road and the red and white at the side of the road but yeah if you took a screenshot of this now and compared it to a screenshot from pole position it looks pretty identical apart from the car sprite which is this big chunky purple car um this is probably a representation of some sports car of the time um, it's got that kind of got that a uh, slatted roof um, at the back on the uh, back windscreen. So I wonder if it's one of. Um, I'm trying to think of the make of. I think it's a Citron that had that, and uh, a few other cars had that at the time as well. Um, but anyway, if anyone knows the make and model of the car, I think it's got pop-up headlights as well. Are there pop-up headlights at the front there? I don't know. It's hard to tell. If someone knows which make and model of the car this is sort of based on, please let me know in the comments below. But I was literally driving yesterday and um, I'd never seen this before. It was an old early 80s Citron which had those roof slats at the back. Uh, so maybe it's maybe it's based on that car, who knows. Here we are on the dreaded night stage. Wow, okay, obviously it's just changing the um, assigned colors and palette there to all blacks for certain colors and on on that's using the game or whatever and now we just have to use the tail lights to try and uh, avoid the other cars on the road and this is a really nice touch and I like the cityscape in the background of the uh, lights on the tall uh, buildings there and stuff um, I can't think of m any 
driving games prior to 1985 and this one that has like night stages and stuff. I'm really struggling to think of a game that implemented kind of a night stage like this. I have seen it on later games on the Amstrad. Um, I think Twin Turbo V8 had a night stage and Pro, ba Pro Power Boat Simulator had a night stage on that as well. But prior to Rally 2 1985, can you guys tell me in the comments if you remember any of the driving games on any of a computer or coin op that had a night stage like this one, I'd be interested to know. Because I don't remember seeing anything like this before from a game prior to 1985. So, kind of, this is really nice. I like it. I like this a lot. It's certainly not the best driving game on the Amstrad by a long shot, but um, I just love the charm of it. I really, really do. I'm glad we came across this on that um, Amsoft Amstream. And that, that's a good watch as well, guys. So look out for my uh, on my channel, the A to Z of Amsoft Games Am stream. It was an epic, epic, like seven to eight hours long stream, but we covered every Amsoft game. And I'm, I'm glad I did it because I've discovered games like this. Oh, on to the dreaded snow stage. And yes, the physics do change in this. So when you uh, move left and right, there is like, um, you do start sliding across a bit as well. Uh, this is actually quite a difficult stage. Now I'm making this look pretty easy because um, I mean, this is a long play video, so I'm gonna try and do it without crashing uh, or restarting or, you know, I'm gonna try to get the perfect run, which I managed to do. But boy, this was tough, especially on this stage. So use the fire button a lot to break. To be honest, you're given a generous amount of time um, so as long as you take it easy around the bends, especially on these um, snow, and also the uh, desert and sand tracks has a similar um, physics to it as well. So as long as you take it pretty slow in the corners, because uh, if you come out a corner, there might be a car right ahead of you. So take it easy. Ooh. And just be very careful overtaking cars. That's all you need to do really, guys, to get through this. Um, so what, what else have I got to say? The programmer, let's get round to him at last, was a guy called Carlo uh, Perconti, spelled P-E-R-C-O-N-T-I, I probably pronounced that wrong. Um, he also did, uh, for the Amstrad, Asterix and the Magic Cauldron, which was pretty good. Uh, Zax, which was a Zaxxon clone. Volleyball, Pengi, Galachip, Boogie 2, and Devil's Castle, amongst a few others. That was the snow stage there. There we go. Low score for that one, but doesn't the score doesn't really matter. But you can you, you could actually replay this game for like a high score challenge or whatever against mates, which are the best score you can get at the end. Uh, but yeah, that's all from Carlo. Uh, I found um, a lot of um, kind of clones of arcade games, but with his own twist and. Um, I think this is sufficiently different from pole position for it not to be classed too much of a uh, pole position clone. Um, as for review scores at the time, um, Amstrad Action uh, Magazine, this got re reviewed actually in the very, very first issue of Amstrad Action, issue one in October of 1985, believe it or not. Um, they also note that this is a clone of pole position and they're kind of reason reasonably impressed by it making note of the good graphics, different weather conditions, and a handy editing function for the tracks, which we will have a look at the end of the video. Uh, they do mark it down for having no control over the acceleration, and they make note of some iffy collision detection at times. I, I think this is fairly fair. I mean, this, the sprite scaling isn't too bad at all. I've seen a lot worse, a lot, lot worse in Amstrad driving games, but they can cut, these cars can come up, you, come at you quite quickly and un unexpectedly because they do sort of jump around the track a little bit so I can understand why they might feel like the collision detection could be a bit off at times it's probably more the fact that the sprite scaling um, it's kind of jumps at you a bit not entirely smooth but look at that I managed to like squeeze between those two cars they're pretty okay um, so I'll probably disagree with them on the collision detection um, as for their scores um, they gave this a 
grab factor 56%, graphics 71%, sonics 55%, that's pretty harsh, I mean this is pretty good music for Amsoft games, bloody hell. Um, that's a really harsh score. I, I do wonder at times what Amsterdam Action reviewers were on and if they sort of phoned in a lot of the reviews and just plucked a score out the sky for some things. Anyway, moving on, um, they gave Stain Power 72% and an overall score of 65%. Hmm. I think that's pretty harsh, actually. Um, I know they gave other Amsoft games higher scores that are nowhere near as good as this or as fun and I think um, sometimes reviewers miss the miss the point of games and that and that games should be fun to play and this is actually quite good fun as I mentioned several times already it's got a really lovely charm to it but do I do do I and do you actually enjoy playing it and uh, yeah I mean it might get a bit sort of um, I wouldn't say tedious but I don't think I'd come back and play this repeatedly for hours at a time. Um, I think it's a game that you'd have a quick blast on, have a bit of fun, and then move on from it. I'm struggling a bit there because we've got similar effects in the in the sand here in the desert as we do on the snow and ice, and I got stuck on the edge of the track there. But yeah, guys, I have a lot of I, I had a lot of fun with this game. I actually really enjoyed making the uh, long play video. I enjoyed practicing the game, and I enjoyed making it. But I'm kind of done with the game now. I don't think I'd want to play it again for a while. So I'm going to take all that into consideration. And you know what, screw it, guys. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give my review score now. I usually do it at the end of the video, but I feel it's appropriate and the right time to do that now. So my overall overall score for Grand Prix Rally 2, I'm going to give this a seven and a half out of ten. All things considered, uh, obviously I need to have a bit of context to it that this is an Amsoft games and most Amsoft games are pretty crap. <laughs> um, this is early days of programming, 1985, and they're still discovering how, programmers are still discovering how to unlock the power of the Amstrad. And, and I just love the uh, variation in the tracks and the weather. I love the, uh, I love the simplicity. I love the chunky colorful graphics. I love the jolly jingles of music. Um, Obviously there's been better graphics, better music and playability and all that kind of stuff in later games, but for its time, this is a decent game. So uh, seven and a half out of 10 from me. And we're back on a dreaded night stage again. So uh, a couple of, uh, yeah, a couple of the uh, tracks kind of do get reused. Well, the weather conditions or whatever. Uh, I think one weather condition we don't get to play in the normal ra rally over 10 stages is the fog stage which is basically sort of blue all the way around the screen um, it's not as impressive actually as the other uh, weather conditions um, but I will show you that in the uh, track edit segment I do at the end of the video anyway for you And there we go. Um, I don't think I've really got anything else to mention, so we'll just commentate on what's happening right now, really. Again, just taking things really slowly. And you can actually go quite far off the edge of the track and, and sit there for a while without sort of crashing or whatever. Um, just that time will be ticking down quite fast and you need to keep overtaking cars to keep the uh, timer from running out. So there's a balance between the timer and the length of the track. You don't have to go full pelt throughout the entire game. There we go, bravo! And here we go, here's the final track. Track number nine. Ten, oh, well, tenth track really, and we're back on another snow stage. <laughs> so this gets repeated as well. So I just take things really easily. Um, so you see, there's like basically two sprites for our car. The main sprite here, and obviously when you're turning around a corner. And it flips around when you're going a different direction, so it's just mirrored, probably horizontally. And 
At least they've done that. It's not just a static sprite throughout the entire game, even when you go around bends and stuff. Uh, the opponent cards are, are, are all the same, of course, as well. Um, no variation in the opponents. We don't get any objects in the middle of the track, like puddles, oil spills, or logs, or anything like that. A lot of other driving games throw in there. Um, does it actually the game is called Rally? Does it feel like a rally? I suppose it does because we're going through different conditions. We're not going um, on like race tracks like Silverstone and uh, Donington or whatever. We're out in the countryside somewhere on a race track, and this feel this feel like a bit of a rally. Anyway, there we go. That is the final stage completed. Bravo! And we get the ending screen coming up. Bit of a low score there for the last one, but who cares? We made it. There we go, there's the ending. Some more new jolly music, a little animation there on our sprite there, celebrating his victory. And we get music on a new music on the high, on the high score table too. Uh, so we're gonna pop our name in here, have a listen to the music, which is only a short loop which repeats itself. Yeah, it might take a while to put my name in. But there we go, guys. That was 7.5 out of 10 from me as a review score. I, can, I really enjoyed this one. Definitely not one of the best driving and racing games on the Amstrad, but um, definitely, no, definitely notable, especially for its charm, which I keep mentioning. And there we go. So now guys, we're gonna take a look at um, track editing. After one last look at the uh, title screen here, and have listened to this music. <laughs> Excellent music there from Michael uh, Winogradoff. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> So, track editing, right, um, you can actually apparently save this to t uh, your tracks to tape and disc, uh, but I've not tested that out, but we can basically edit a car track, which is what the existing tracks are, so you can't create your own, so you can actually uh, go through the different stages here, there's bridge, seashore, uh, sunny, night stage, snow, Sunny again, desert, night, and snow. But what we'll do is we'll go back and edit like basically the first track so we can show you that like, you can actually do stuff in it. And we can change the weather condition of the first track if we want to, as you can see there. And there's the fog one, which wasn't actually used in the game. So we're gonna choose fog here. Let's quick flip through again. And basically, this is how they made their tracks in the game, actually. So you can just go to different portions of the track. So some portions don't have anything happening, uh, but we've just chosen the first portion, and we're gonna change the curve here to the maximum curve, just for, you know, see what it looks like. And you can change the uh, direction of the curve. You can see how quickly and simply they made these tracks. We're gonna Make sure the curve goes to the left, and we're going to have a massive length on the uh, curve here as well. We're going to go to maximum. So yeah, you kind of can create your own tracks. You're editing the existing ones, and then you can tweak different portions of the track. So it's a bit limited. But there we go. Here we are on the fog stage. <laughs> uh, we should see the left bend coming up at maximum bend. Here it is. Yeah, and literally you can't <laughs> you can't control yourself on it. But I don't think there's ever a bend on the game that has like 99 uh, value. And you can actually, because the bend's so bizarre here, you can actually push off to the right here and it should loop you around to the other side. <laughs> Hence why I don't think they've used 99 value before there. And because uh, of the fog conditions, cars come at you would seem to be a lot quicker out the blue. And there's me crashing and exploding for the first time. <laughs> so there we go, guys. Thanks for watching. That was Grand Prix Rally 2 on the Amstrad CPC, or Rally 2 from Laurie Seals. 
but we're playing the Amsoft version here released in the UK. Seven and a half out of ten, and there's a disqualification screen. Cheers, guys, and hopefully see you soon. Goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that, if you did please click a like below, leave a comment and also subscribe if you haven't already, and over that way there's another video for you to check out, Zypho out.